Hey everyone, this is Dieworm with another build diary. This time I'll be doing a summary of the last two streams with our solo self-found lightning mage. I have to admit this mage is pretty amazing up to this point. We did swap a few things around in the end, but the base was very solid. This is super beginner friendly and you could treat this video as a nice way to get into the game as someone new to the last epoch. It's inspired by the Elementalist Arc Lightning build in Path of Exile, a great way to get started in that game. Exactly what I used back then a few years ago by now. The idea is to make a crit lightning build and that is all I have at this point before we start streaming. Our starting point is a lightning blast which happens to be the skill we're using for damage throughout the entire run so that's nice. The only drawback of this skill is that it crashes the last epoch client from time to time. For me it crashed roughly every 2 hours. If you can't handle that, wait until the devs fix it. Also, don't play hardcore with this. At the very start, we're specking into the Lightning Blast. First, I made the skill Chain, using Arcane Power. It is just a nice quality of life and it honestly removes the need for any other damage skill apart from Lightning Blast. From this moment on, you can spec into supporting skills if you want. I didn't do that on stream though, I specced into Elemental Nova at level 9. It's decent for groups and it's also not a bad skill, but in the long run we got rid of this anyway, so I would suggest you don't spec into it. With basically just blue gear that we found, as this was a solo self found run, we're doing enough damage. You should prioritize flat lightning damage or adaptive spell damage. It skills really well with lightning blast and by doing that it is all you need. Intelligence is a great stat to get. I would not neglect resistances in early levels, so get some fatality and get some elemental protections. At level 19 we specced into Flame Ward, which functions as our ward generation tool. You want to make your way to the top right and basically take everything over there. All of those nodes are good and give you around 1800 base ward in the end. With passives for the base tree, take 8 out of 8 Arcanist because flat intelligence is amazing, 2 out of 8 Elementalist because we need to spend the points, take 1 point in reactive ward, take 4 points in mage flurry as cast speed is super important for lightning blast, finally take 5 out of 5 warden as ward is your friend very very soon and you need the retention. We will be using ward in the rest of the playthrough as a substitute for protections. Ward is amazing, it provides tons of effective health, basically destroying the need for armor or protections and for running the campaign the ward we will get from flame ward is sufficient. As Jet correctly pointed out, it is tough to see how much ward you currently have stacked. Ward is poorly presented in the UI and because of that you are at risk of running out of ward without you noticing it. It's a pretty big downside, especially in hardcore. A bit further in, we're specking into front loaded for lightning blast, which is a very, very strong. It is a huge DPS increase and now your chains do massive amounts of damage on very few gear requirements. Up next will be the double casts and the quadruple casts. Pretty decent stuff right there as well. You just need to make sure that you keep your staffs or wands upgraded. Which means basically you want to find and equip the latest version of staves as soon as they are available regardless of what affixes they have. Enemies will just drop them. The reason for these is that you always want the adaptive spell damage to be as high as it can be because it is the biggest contributor to your lightning blast damage. We're 2 hours into the stream and it is just smooth sailing with minimal investment. Moving forward at the roughly 3.5 hour mark and we reach level 34 which means we can pick another skill. I'm realizing that elemental nova is basically useless at this point. I've hardly ever used it in the last hour and investing further in this makes little sense. We're about to experiment with something new, the combination of disintegrate and arcane ascendance, the new spell added in 0.7.7. At the start of the second stream we're level 36. We continue where we left off and I'm once again amazed by how much damage this build does while being tanky at the same time with all the ward. I'll take you through what we have in terms of passes. At at least the direction we're going. We're basically just taking all the crit nodes, intelligence of course, cast speed and that is really it. Only much later when you're hitting around level 50 you have enough points to get the adaptive spell damage nodes which you should take as they provide a big boost in damage. About 6 hours of playtime while streaming we complete the campaign. We're not even high enough to get a 5th skill. It is clear to me however at this point that disintegrate is not worth picking up as it doesn't offer any advantages to lightning blast. We start running some monoliths and the scaling we've had with lightning blast up to this point simply continues. Each time you equip the next tier staff or wand your damage gets a boost. Some new idols give
give a boost as well. This build is very effective on a super budget outfit as we have no expensive gear whatsoever. I have focused on intelligence and I'm starting to craft some glancing blow items as that will be the next defensive milestone. Getting to 100% glancing blow cap is very important. It reduces all incoming damage by 50% which is massive. Our ward does the rest. Eventually to add a bit more defense you might add some dart rating to the mix but that is about it. 7 hours in and we've ditched disintegrate and tried the lightning version of snap freeze. You can turn that into lightning but I'm realizing more and more that an additional damage skill is simply a waste of skill slots. Lightning Blast and the Change simply do so much damage that it is unnecessary to have anything else in the damage department. It is such a versatile skill as well, effective versus both single targets and groups because of the chaining. So that means we're taking a bunch of supporting skills to provide ward and some other defenses. And that's about it. I'll take you through the final setup as we have it currently. We're level 58 and I'm going to show you the skill trees without super going into detail. You can expect a full guide for this build once I have reached level 75 or so. At that point when this build is still as strong, I'm confident that the scaling continues, that you can do end game content and that beginners won't be disappointed once they reach endgame. That's still a risk right now because this build could fall off at some point. Making it to level 58 in a smooth way does not guarantee you this is a good endgame build with the way last epoch scales. On to the final setup. Lightning Blast is pretty straightforward with some chains, crits, multicasting and lightning Aegis notes for some protection. The simple setup is extremely effective. Fire Shield is used for ward generation. I'm not convinced this will be in the final build, but okay. Warding 5 out of 5 gives ward, but it is not much and we may find a better use for this slot. Flame Ward is basically optimized in terms of ward generation, but not so much in ward retention. I prefer generation and get overall retention from somewhere else, mainly intelligence. Arcane Ascendance we turned into a bunch of free spellcasting going south. Acuity and Cunning are pretty great so far. It's a very effective temporary buff this skill. It's really good once you get the hang of it. Finally, Teleport. We need an escape tool. This generates decent ward. It's a good skill to have in my opinion. Here you see the passive trees so far. I'm only level 58 so there will be more. The focus is on crit, spell damage and flat damage because the ward nodes are terrible here and you should rely on gear to get more ward. Let's have a look at the gear. I focused on intelligence. It gives damage and ward retention so it is amazing. I'm using an Aegis in my offhand for more intelligence and ward generation. That means I've got wands equipped in the main hand which still does enough damage. I think this setup is a lot better overall compared to a staff setup. You would lose too many defenses with a staff while only gaining a little bit of extra damage. I've turned this character from solo cell found into my regular soft core so I can use my stash and level this guy further all the way to end game. You can expect a full fledged guide once I'm done with this because this is one of the smoother builds I've played and this could be an excellent beginner build. Any questions or suggestions leave them down below. And that's it for now. Just another short build diary. Thanks so much for watching and making it to the end. I will see you all soon. Love you all. Bye bye.